What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play games on Linux. Alright guys, so here we are at my Linux desktop and I got a dual screen setup going on here. If the camera quality is a little bit better, that's because I'm using my new phone. And I'm not using the old phone that had a lot of shakiness in it. And to show you that I'm not just screwing around, uh, here are all my games from my game library that I have currently installed anyways. And one that's been sucking me in a lot lately, Valheim. I absolutely love this game and it's absolutely amazing. Now here we go, it's launching on Steam. And launching just as it would on Windows. Now one thing I will say is that each game does have its quirks and uh, things that need to be uh, adjusted for. Uh, one of the things that is on Valheim that needs to be taken care of is the multi-screen problem. So you see that I have my cursor over here, but I can go off of the game because it does not capture. And uh, that affects building and stuff like that and makes it so that you can't build properly. But we're not getting into that today. Before you can get to gaming on any Linux distribution whatsoever, you are going to need drivers. So what we could do is, depending on what distribution you're using, I am currently using Linux Mint and it has worked absolutely phenomenal for me. I recommend everybody use Linux Mint, but everybody has their own preferences. So the first thing that you're going to do is get the driver. So all you gotta do is go to your start menu of choice and a search driver manager and this will automatically search for drivers that are going to be proprietary drivers for your system and of course you're going to need a graphics driver if you want to play any games whatsoever if you have a graphics card installed so as you can see i have my nvidia driver 535 and this is not the open source driver because it seems like the open source driver is no longer available and i'm also not using the x server xorg video nouveau driver uh, so this is what you normally have by default, depending on what version of Linux you're using. And it has very poor performance, so usually when it comes to different uh, Ubuntu-based distributions, you will have an option to set a custom driver, or proprietary driver rather, and that would be the NVIDIA driver. Even though it is not open source, it is still uh, the best performance that you can get. And uh, while that is a little bit of a disheartening note as a Linux user, that is just what you really need to do in order to get up and going on games. Next thing you're going to need is Wine. So this step is probably not 100% necessary, but what I like to do, I like to get the latest version of Wine that is available. So we can go to Wine HQ, and this is where all of the upstream Wine comes from so this might not be entirely necessary but we can go to download over here so i'm using an ubuntu based distribution because it is linux mint which is ubuntu based go to ubuntu and it actually has its own spot for linux mint so i'm running this version right here 21.x so you just go on down the list of the instructions sudo dpackage add architecture i386 go to make directory go wget that's going to install your keys and add your repository. Then you go ahead and go with this right here. You do this, downloads it, and then when you do sudo apt, inst or sudo apt update, it'll give you the option to install. So I like to go with the development branch because that is the most up-to-date Wine version, and it actually seems to not have very many bugs. So I go with the development branch just because I don't want the stable branch because it's usually pretty outdated and the development branch is always updated to the latest version. So you just sudo apt install dash dash install dash recommends winehq dash devil. Then you'll have your latest version of wine installed. Now the next thing you're going to want is Steam. So you can either do that by going to, by searching for Steam, the Steam store, and you can install Steam with this button up here. So it does have an option for Linux-based operating systems. You can just click on that and it'll download a package that you can install. So if I download this, you can see that I got a Debian package. So that would be Debian-based distributions such as Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and of course, Linux Mint that I'm using right now. And when you open this up, I already have the same version installed, but you just click on the install button here for the Debian installer. 
and that will install Steam for you. That is my preferred way of using Steam because it has the most affinity with your computer and your hardware. Uh, but you can use Flatpak. I've had a few issues with multiple drives and Flatpak. I prefer to use the Debian package instead. Now the next thing that you're going to need to do is actually go into Steam after you log in and you're going to need to change a few settings. So you go to Steam settings and you're going to go to compatibility here. So you're going to enable Steam Play and also enable Steam Play for other titles. This is going to allow you to run Proton, which is a compatibility layer based off of Wine that just makes it like it's running on a Windows computer. So once you get all of this selected, it will have you restart Steam and then you go to Proton Experimental. I always leave it on experimental because it is the most up to date and it has some pretty good compatibility. I never had any issues. So the next thing that you're probably going to want to do after you install Steam is you're going to want to change your downloads. You can completely ignore this step and we can move on to the next step in a couple moments here. But we're not actually going to be in the downloads. I like to allow downloads during gameplay only because I mostly play single player games. But you can turn that off or leave it disabled because it is uh, disabled by default to not really bog you down while you're playing multiplayer games online. So the thing I was actually thinking about was storage. So as you can see, I have my slash home slash art. That is my home directory. I only have Proton installed on here and Steamworks common redistribute. But this is all the stuff that comes basically as soon as you turn on Proton. It gets downloaded almost immediately. So I actually added a disk and that is where all my library is. So the way that you can add a disk, you go to all the way to the right to this little plus icon to add a new location. So you can add a new Steam library folder and it'll automatically detect it. Detected my large drive that I have that is for video editing and video recording. And you can click add. And now I have a new Steam library on a, another drive. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that drive because I already have a drive specifically for games and other things of the such. So realistically, that should be all that you need to play games. And here is my list of games here that I have installed all of these games aside from Watch Dogs. I'm actually going to uninstall that because it does not run. So you have to be very careful with what games will run and what won't run. Uh, I recommend utilizing the refund program just to make sure that if a game does not run on Linux, that you'll at least not have spent the money. But as you can see, I have Skyrim on here. I have uh, AI Dungeon. That's just basically a web app. Uh, Atomic Heart. I was actually just playing that last night and I was up until about 2.30 in the morning playing it because I just got completely sucked into the game and it ran fantastic. I absolutely love this game. Uh, I have the Bioshock series. I have Call of Duty Black Ops, the original. It does run, but it doesn't run very well because it wasn't really made to run on a compatibility layer, so it runs kind of not great. I had to turn off shadows in order for it to run smoothly. So for non-Steam games, what you can do is you could do Lutris. Now Lutris is also another one of those wine-derived compatibility layer implementations, and it has this really nice interface. As you can see, I have Origin installed. It doesn't really like to run too well. Ubisoft Connect is also on here. And another thing that I really like to do on here is I actually run Vortex Mod Manager, but Vortex Mod Manager, the reason why I'm not gonna go over this in this video is because that really needs its own video. Now for Origin, just like you would with Steam, because I have my Steam library also registered on here, Origin, you have to install the Origin Launcher in order for it to work, and it gives you the option to install Origin through Wine. So you go ahead, install, it asks you what location, and if you want to create application menus and shortcuts, I like to, and I'm actually going to add a new folder called Origin, and hit OK. I'm gonna continue, and it's going to download from Origin itself, install. So I really like Lutris in terms of getting applications to run that you normally can't get to run using just Wine because they have a little bit of special sauce going on in the background that allows you to just run things that you normally wouldn't otherwise be able to, whether that be games or applications. And then as you can see, it pulls up your Wine install here that is going to possibly also install Gecko. And that is also another thing for .NET Framework, which is very important for a lot of different games to run. So a lot of games have anti-cheat 
sheet built into it or some other necessity that has to rely on .NET framework. So now going on to Origin, you have stuff like uh, Battlefield if you're into that type of game. I used to be very into Battlefield and I absolutely loved it. But it looks like we're having an issue with the installation. It says to quit and restart. Okay, online login is currently unavailable. So I'm going to put in my credentials here and get this all right off. All right, so I just tried to log in, but it says that it is not online. So it looks like Origin has a bit of an issue with Lutris. I'm going to close it out see if launching it directly will fix this problem okay so it looks like origin is not functional just yet but uh, a lot of origin games i've noticed have fallen in popularity other than the battlefield series and uh fifa and stuff like that you know stuff they can, that you can normally get on console that they release every single year that's the same game but with a new skin uh i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole and i'm probably making a lot of people mad right now by saying that but I don't really care for these games anymore and I haven't really played them in probably over two years. And I haven't really missed it, so I can really say that if Origin is your thing, there's probably going to have to be another way to, uh, you're probably going to have to find a different way to run Origin, and I will probably explore that in the future. So for myself, I've noticed that a lot of these games run right out of the box after you install them using Proton, of course, and uh, they run very well. Uh, Valheim runs absolutely phenomenally. And before you laugh at me, yes, I am basically a noob. I am on bronze. As you can see, it's running pretty fantastic. It's a little bit stuttery because I have OBS running, which demands a lot of CPU utilization. Uh, here is my house that I was going to make as another base before I realized that is very far out of the way. Uh, and if I go all the way back to the circle in the center of the game, uh, I defeated the Elder, Eichler, I think that's how you pronounce it. I defeated the Elder, did a whole bunch of exploring, and like I said, I put about, I put almost 30 hours into this game just in the past week, just because of how fun this game is. I, I've had an absolutely no issues with the game, and it runs absolutely fantastic. And this is all running on Linux with no issues whatsoever. So if you haven't heard of Minecraft, you have been living under a rock for the past 15 years. As you can see, it launches just fine, no problems. I play 1.19.4 because I don't really care about the new features and I'm running Fabric. And here I am in my world label labeled New World and I have the Distant Horizons mod and stuff like that running as well, so I have a very far render distance. Uh, this runs absolutely fantastic. I have never had a single issue with Minecraft and this was actually the first game that I installed while running Linux. Um, and funny enough, it was actually the first game that I installed while getting into PC at all. So just like with the Windows install of Minecraft, you go to minecraft.net, you go to your login, sign in with your Microsoft account, and just like you normally would on Windows, you go to download launcher, download what distribution you are going to be running. Uh, so I use the Debian package, but if you're an Arch user, you can select Arch. And if you're not using any of those types, like if you're using if you're using CentOS or something like that, which would be very strange that you're trying to game on it because that's a more productivity focused distribution. You would select other and it would download a tar.gz. You could just right click and extract here, go in here, and then you have an app image here for Minecraft, the Minecraft launcher. But just like with the Steam package, you open up your Debian package and click the install button on the install manager. Now you have Minecraft, then you sign in on your launcher and boom, you're in the game. But one step that you may need to do before that is you're gonna have to install Java. So I like to use the open packages wherever I get a chance to. Open JDK. So open JDK, you can get the latest version, which is now 19. I have 18 installed. Open JDK, and then we get to see our options that we have. We have all the way back to 11. But what you want is the latest version dash JRE. So this one is 17-JRE, but what would be latest version now is 19-JRE. So that is a Java runtime environment. That's what JRE stands for. And that allows you to run the Java command. So if you're installing from a, a jar file, so you would do Java minus jar and then your jar file. And that would be in your downloads or whatever directory that you have your jar file in. Well guys, that should just about do it. If you want to get set up on gaming, that should be everything. But if I miss something, go ahead and leave a comment down below and make sure that everybody knows how to get up and running on Linux for gaming because the more people that are on Linux for gaming, the better it gets. 
So if I missed something or got something wrong, please feel free to let me know and then I'll make sure that I pin that comment, like it, and also I'll give it a, a nice heart just to show that I appreciate you. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. This is Arch, and I will see you in the next video.